Hi, what's up guys, CP Modi here, back with another video, and this is the Huawei Mate 10 Pro. A phone from a company that many of us can't actually pronounce, but definitely know exist. Now the Huawei Mate 10 Pro is a phone that you've either heard about, or you've never even heard exist. Late last year, and even some of early this year, Huawei's been making a big push within Australia here, putting big billboards up and doing some advertising here and there to get the word about their phones out and about. And the Mate 10 Pro, however, still remains a little bit of a ghost. But why is that? Well, for those of you who don't know, Huawei is actually a leading telecommunications company in the whole world. Not exactly many people here in sort of the more Western markets have heard of them, but they are definitely a global leader. Especially if you jump over to something that's more of the Asian market, you'll definitely see Huawei up there with the likes of Samsung and Apple. But over here in the Western markets like Australia, the US and UK, Huawei is a little bit on the less well-known side. And they're more known for their lower end kind of phones that are really cheap that sort of get shoved to the side of the store that you pick up if you can't afford a main high-end flagship. And Huawei has decided to do something about that and they want to be up center stage with Samsung and Apple and all the other high-end companies here in the Western world and that is their Huawei Mate 10 Pro. Now, unfortunately, recently, Huawei's also do come under fire with their phone lineup, mainly being caught in the middle of many governments actually reporting against buying these phones and it's not looking so great when it comes to the government recommendation sides, and this is down to the fact that Huawei has been well known to have ties with the Chinese government. But what if we ignore all the US warnings and all the FBI and stuff like that? What if we take a look at this phone and see what it can actually do? So with that being said, let's jump into the design department and take a look at the design of this guy. It is a beautiful metal and glass design. And this is pretty common to see many other high-end flagship phones and it's nice to see that Huawei's also to move to this new design language. These glass sandwiches are wrapped up with a metal band and my particular unit is in a really sweet looking blue and oh snap I think this is one of the nicest phones I've ever owned basically every phone up until now I've owned has been a black phone I'm really not a fan of colored phones I think they should just be black phones and they really look nice and stealth but damn this blue looks really awesome again sure I've thrown no skin on it but damn that blue absolutely looks on point and if it didn't grab fingerprints so much I probably wouldn't even skin this phone because it looks just that great I have to say it might just be well one of my favorite phones in terms of the visuals that I've seen in a very, very, very long time. But for fans of other colors, we do also to get ourselves the more traditional black, the blue as I do have here today, a pinky kind of color and also to a brown that they call mocha, but honestly looks terrible. Personally, I do like the look of the black. However, I'm really happy that I did get the blue here in person. And for many markets, the blue is the only color that is coming to your market. So you may want to keep an eye on that. But overall, the design of this guy is very, I guess you could say 28. With the aforementioned glass slab sandwich design, very small bezels and a really tall aspect ratio display, it very much lines up with a lot of other phones on the market here today. Now breaking out of the design and getting into some of the specifications, we do see some very premium specs. The design is very nice and it is backed up with some premium guys here. Now in terms of specifications, we are looking at a 6 inch display running at 2160 by 1080 resolution. The camera on this guy is a 20 megapixel pixel affair with both RGB and monochrome sensors which we'll touch on in just a moment and also to a massive 4000 milliamp hour battery. Now again I'll get to this in just a moment but this battery is almost double the size of your iPhone 10's battery. Absolutely crazy. And then finally we're also to getting ourselves a monumental 6 gigabytes of RAM and Huawei's own CPU silicon setup being the Kirin 960 processor. Now if we take a look at that RAM for just a moment 6 gigabytes of RAM. To put it in some kind of perspective, this is 6 gigs worth of RAM in a phone, whereas a lot of entry-level PC laptops and also two desktops don't even have more than 4 gigs of RAM. You can still walk down to a big box PC store today here in Australia and buy a laptop for around $500 to $1000 with only 4 gigabytes of RAM. This phone has 6. In fact, does it make a difference in real-world usage? 
No, not really. It's more one of those spec things that are like, I have six gigs of RAM and it doesn't really help you in terms of the actual performance of this phone. Even though the phone is absolutely flying through and super fast, I never found myself using more than two and a half to three gigs worth of RAM. So that's kind of really not making much of a difference there, but six gigs of RAM on a phone, absolutely mad. And then also too, Huawei's made their own processing package for this guy. So rather than just getting a more typical Snapdragon processor, which is what we've come to expect from a lot of phones out there, what Huawei's gone ahead and done is just built their own package and the performance is actually surprising. Honestly, I wasn't expecting basically numbers that could stand up or even beat out a lot of the more mainstream consumer phones. So again, in terms of the processing power on this guy, I'm really, really happy. Now, because they did go ahead and build their own processor, they also do introduce the Skynet chip, or rather, sorry, the NPU or Neuro Processing Unit which is basically, let's face it, a Skynet processing chip. Basically, this guy is on board to go ahead and offload all the AI tasks to this specified uh, little piece of silicon. It's designed for AI tasks. It's a little sort of slice in there. And honestly, it's just Skynet for your phone. Now, thankfully though, this Skynet chip seems to be doing very little in terms of a day-to-day -day basis. It'll recognize things like when you point the camera at a sky or a tree, it'll come up with a little setting to make your images look better because it's realized you're pointing it at a tree or a sky or something along those lines and it'll apply some basic filters to your camera application and really it'll do very baseline stuff like that. In day-to-day -day usage however I just found that the uh, Skynet chip was sitting around not exactly doing anything until it is ready to take over the world with the rest of the computers out there. Honestly in Huawei's keynote though they were going ahead and talking about how great this Skynet chip is and how it's gonna make everything different and revolutionize this phone. Honestly from all the other phones that I've tested so far, the Skynet chip seems to be doing really little in terms of actual usage day to day. Now, keeping it in more of the software department of Huawei, they have gone ahead and packed this phone with some really high-end software to go ahead and match up with the high-end hardware and specifications. With this guy running the latest version of Android 8.0 out of the box at the time of recording, and with Huawei committing to at least one full software update, we are getting ourselves some really good pieces of software. Now, you may be thinking, hang on a second, one full software update is Huawei really going ahead with that well to be clear a lot of manufacturers up until recently haven't even been supporting the next generation of operating system on their phone so it's nice to see a company come out and publicly say that they are committed to keeping that phone up to date now for me I'm still running an early 2018 software update though I'm sure a new one will be coming down the line as we are getting towards the end of Q1 here in 2018 but at the end of the day I'm really interested to see what the future holds in terms of the software department and also too, in terms of the software department, Huawei, like a lot of other companies, have gone ahead and opted to put their own skin over the top of Android 8.0. This is known as EMUI or Emotion UI, and you will be very emotional to find out that this thing is the furthest thing from stock Android out there. I've not seen a skin this heavy in a very, very long time, and I think this will be a make it or break it deal for a lot of people out there. A lot of the time in the Western kind of markets here in Australia, especially, a lot of us do like that more clean and simple design. Unfortunately, Huawei's gone ahead and taken the 2012 approach, reskinned everything in the kitchen sink, and it is really far away from stock Android. So fans of clean Android and simple looking Android are probably gonna have to look away right now. Huawei has definitely changed just about everything. From the notification shade being completely different to the lock screen style having no resemblance to stock Android, again, everything is completely changed. And personally, I am definitely a big fan of stock Android. For me, I've run HTC phones with stock Android on them. I've run Nexus and Google phones and absolutely love them. This is one of my first phones in quite some time that I've run that hasn't run stock Android and honestly I've actually enjoyed the experience even though Huawei has the furthest thing from stock Android on this guy everything has been skinned so it's not like you got a bit of stock over here some unoptimized over here everything is uniformed and the same across the whole operating system and with the inclusion of a dark mode you can actually achieve a really nice different look to Android that honestly doesn't feel too bad. The stock launcher on this guy is okay, but I threw Nova launcher over the top of it to get a little bit more closer to stock Google experience, and I absolutely love that. But overall, the whole experience of using this phone is totally different from using stock Android, but at the same time, Huawei's at least gone to the effort of changing everything, so you get that whole different experience, rather than a little bit of a hodgepodge thing of everything and around. It just seems to work okay, but again, if you love stock Android, you're probably going to have a bit of a deal breaker here.
Now just quickly shifting gears before we do get to some of the downsides of this phone, the camera is actually really, really awesome. With a 20 megapixel shooter on the back of this guy, it really powers through photos and Huawei have reportedly partnered up with Leica to make their camera experience a whole lot better, which actually isn't too far off. However, Leica has very little to do other than putting their name in the back of this phone and licensing their font. The actual cameras inside of this guy is built by LG, the software is made by Huawei, and the only thing I can really tell that Leica's had to do with this is slap their font on it and maybe offered some suggestions for filters and settings for their particular device. Now with that being said, the camera application in this guy is the most full featured I've ever seen. Huawei definitely have got it right if you are a pro user and you want to get the most out of your phone camera, this thing is absolutely crazy. With more features than you can shake a stick at and a pro mode that really takes pro modes to the next level, the ability to shoot in RAW and then also to edit is a nice thing. Taking a look at some of these images, we can see that I shot in RAW, then when ahead and edit it in Lightroom definitely takes the camera to the next level. And hey, if you just leave it in auto mode and just do some pointing and shooting, the AI Skynet chip on this guy also do helps to beef up that image just a little bit more and you're getting a really sweet overall picture. Video quality is also too on a decent point though with that being said, there are cameras with slightly better video options out there. This is definitely oriented more to the camera photo market rather than the camera video market. So if you are in for photos, this has definitely got you covered videos are still fine but there's definitely a few things that I would have liked to see and if you want to know more let me know down below but either way in terms of cameras they are absolutely on point now you may notice on the back that there are two modules now rather than one being depth or one being zoom they're actually two different separate cameras one of them is black and white and the other one is colored you use the color sensor for most sort of things every single day and if you do leave it in auto mode what it will do is actually take photos on both the black and white and also to the color, then merge them together for a super sharp, contrasty, nice looking image, or you could go ahead and just shoot them manually, shoot black and white, or shoot color only. It is totally up to you. In terms of battery life, there's also do a standout feature with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which is again about double the size of an iPhone 10, and it gets me through an entire day with about 50 to 60% left in the battery at the end of the day when I take the charger off at 5.45 a.m. and put it back on the charger at 9 p.m. My very long days are able to be smashed through again with 50 to 60 percent with a battery at the end of the day. This is thanks to the fact it runs an incredibly savage background manager that just kills anything that is running in the background. All your apps still resume from where they were thanks to the fact that it has a ton of RAM, but if you close an application, it just kills it almost instantly, which is great for a lot of applications as they're perfectly fine to be killed off in the background. But there are a couple of applications out there, for example, the Panasonic imaging app that just decides to freak out when Huawei's manager just closes it. It can be a little bit of a downside, but if you want so long battery without really having to do anything yourself, the Huawei phones have definitely got you covered. In terms of charging this guy up when it finally does manage to run out of juice, I can go from anywhere from around 50% to 100% in about half an hour to an hour worth of charging. And and a simple splash and dash on the charger when I get home for about 15 minutes can see me well into the evening without any problems. If I was to enable one of the power saving modes, I can actually run this guy two days no problem. And if you are to put it in extreme power saving mode, I was able to get an estimated five days worth of runtime. Again, this is an estimate number, but seeing that a lockdown mode on a phone isn't really gonna be getting you to use the phone much, I'm pretty sure that five days is very close. Now at this point, the phone sounds really, really good, but what's not to like about it? Well, there's definitely quite a few things. First and foremost, no headphone jack. I'm sure it comes down at the end of the day that a lot of people aren't really using headphone jacks, but it still would have been nice to see things like the um, Samsung S9 still have a headphone jack. Would have been a nice feature to throw into this guy. Sure, it does have an IR blaster at the top of it, but I definitely would trade up that trolling for a headphone jack. And sure, when it does come with an adapter, it is perfectly fine, but I would have just liked to have seen a headphone jack. The Skynet chip is also due really not to everyone's liking when a lot of people do find out about this NPU processing AI thing. A lot of people are kind of turned off and seeing that you can't turn it off 
you're kind of just left with it there. The hardware, whilst is very nice, can be a little bit slippery in the hand with the all glass back and also two painted metal rails. When your hands do get a little bit wet from, well, the water that this thing can resist, you may find yourself, well, a little bit slippery in terms of holding it there. And not to mention, a lot of the Android features inside of this guy have been remodeled to copy iOS with a clear ripoff, especially in things like the sharing settings. So in terms of the operating system, there is definitely a major letdown there. Uh, not to mention, the lock screen's also too fundamentally broken, where if you have notifications going in the background, you lock your phone and then just take a look at the lock screen. Unlike a lot of other Android phones, you can't see your notifications. If you get new ones while the screen is off, that is perfectly fine, but as soon as you unlock the phone, it will wipe all notifications on the lock screen. I don't know why they did that, there is no option to turn that back on. Sure, you can get third-party plugins and stuff like that, but for me, I'm really not digging it too much that you can't have anything on the lock screen. The plastic screen protector that was included with this guy was really nice to see, but it scratched as soon as I laid my finger on it, so a glass screen protector is required if you are going to be running a screen protector at all. And also too, the plastic case again was nice to have, and it was nice that it was a gel style, but also too, like the screen protector, managed to scratch up really, really easily. Overall though, Huawei's done a really good job at making a phone with top end specs and some really good features that allow it to go toe to toe with the likes of Samsung, Apple, and also to HTC. From a great camera, great design, amazing AMOLED display, and basically everything that makes up a really good display, minus some of the software on this guy, overall it is a really decent phone. The downsides, whilst maybe a little bit annoying, such as slippery surfaces and not the best screen protector in the box, can definitely be overlooked once you do throw a case or throw a skin on this guy, your day-to-day -day experience will definitely come up. It has a killer software and also do hardware combo for a lot of people out there with very few other phones on the market that can rival this type of specification. But there is one massive flaw with this phone, so big in fact that no other tech company in the world at the moment is suffering from this situation, and that is governments. Unfortunately, because Huawei is a massive player in the telecommunications world, with their heavy ties in with the Chinese government and allowing backdoors and backend features, places like the US and also to Australia are actually recommending customers against buying these particular phones. They Thanks to these ties and back-end deals that they do have with China. And if you want to know more about this, do do some reading, I'll leave some links down below. But Huawei unfortunately is suffering from a lot of negative press from not only the press, but also to governments recommending against doing this. In fact, governments in the US have gone as far as to block companies from actually carrying these phones, making Huawei rather upset about the situation. And to be clear, no, Huawei is not going to be taking all your photos off your phone and sending them to everybody on your contacts list. It is more of the security agencies being a little bit worried on the security side for these particular devices. Again, we've seen time and time before where Huawei has been caught up in big scandals regarding phone data and also to their telecommunications data being shared with the Chinese government. Sure, someone like me who takes photos of, well, the beach and stuff like that isn't exactly going to be the biggest problem, but if you are in a high position where you may have some sensitive data on your phone that then gets sent back to the Chinese agencies, we're not exactly sure what's going to be happening happening with the data. All in all though, Huawei's built a really awesome phone in the hardware, specifications and software front, however they have been let down by some pretty negative press and a lot of governments strictly just recommending against buying these particular phones. All in all, it is a really nice phone and I absolutely loved my time with it. But let me know down in that comment section, what do you think of this whole Huawei controversy? Are you worried about it or do you think that it's really not too much of a big situation? Again. Let me know down below. If you want to pick up one of these phones, I've left some links in that description box and also too if you want to find out more about this whole controversy with the phones, again, I've left them linked down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.